Hi everyone, thank you for joining today's event. My name is Ria Rattan and I work in the Early Careers team at Marshall McLennan. And today I'm just going to be providing you with an overview of who we are as a company and also um, providing some useful tips uh, when you're applying for your um, for any roles. So I will just share my screen um, and then we can get going. And I understand that we also have a um, we also have a Q&A at the end as well. So just a second. Okay, so going through today's quick agenda, um, like I said, overview of MMC, so Marsha McLennan, the application process, some tips, and then ending with a Q&A. So who we are. Now, I understand this looks a bit daunting, but don't worry, I'll break it down um, for you a little bit um, more simpler. So basically, Marsha McLennan are a global professional services firm, and we have two operating segments um, within, uh, which is made up of four operating companies. So as you can see on the left-hand side, we have risk and insurance, and that makes up Marsh, which is our insurance broking and risk management and solutions company. And we also have Guy Carpenter, which is our reinsurance company, um, and it helps clients achieve profitable growth um, through reinsurance, as well as advisory services. We also have consulting, which is another um, area of um, expertise that we have in our company. And our main consulting company is Mercer. And as you can see within Mercer, we have three lines of business, health, wealth and career. So just to briefly describe each one, health is uh, the solutions that address the health and wellness uh, of clients and employees, such as controlling healthcare costs. Then the wealth part of the business looks after and also grows clients' wealth to meet, help meet their obligations. And then career consulting is to help organisations design and execute sophisticated workforce strategies. You'll also see that we have Oliver Wyman here on the right. Um, and they are also a management consulting company that we have. However, we don't directly recruit for Oliver Wyman. So if you were interested in roles or interested in Oliver Wyman a bit more, then I'd probably suggest go straight to their website um, because they have a lot more details and, and we don't recruit for them. So just a little bit about the schemes that we offer. So we offer apprenticeships, internships, graduate schemes, as well as placements. And here they are in just a little bit more detail. Um, so depending on whichever one that you're interested in, um, you know, it's really important to emphasize that, you know, you should choose the path that is specific and right to you and suitable to you. So not what your friends are doing, not what you've been told to do by your parents, not what someone suggested, but something that's really suits your interests, your needs, your requirements, um, because this isn't a, necessarily a short term, short term fix. So uh, whether that's work experience, just trying to get a feel of the company, whether your um, degree allows a placement, an eight week internship and also a graduate scheme. So here, um, as it just explains very, uh, very briefly, the year placement is a 12 month contract um, and the internship is eight weeks, usually in the summer. And the graduate scheme is two to three years, depending on which degree that you do. And obviously the aim of the internship as well as the placement is to secure a graduate scheme at the end of it, depending on how you perform and how successful you are. One thing I'd also say is that we are not degree specific. So although we are an insurance and consulting company, a lot of people think that we're very finance based, maths based, analytical based, but that is not the case at all. Um, so I myself did psychology at university. A lot of the grads that have joined this year, they've done geography, politics, economics, um, history. So it's a wide range of degrees. So we don't ask for a specific um, degree um, at all when you apply. So now I'm just going to briefly go through the application process. Um, and again, it looks quite complicated, but I will break it down a little bit further. Um, so it just makes, it makes a bit more sense. So for early careers and in our recruitment team, this is what we go through. So 
Um, understandably, it's quite a competitive job market. So we want we wanted to create these steps that showcase your skills and strengths to the best of your ability and give everyone a fair chance. And the last stage of the application process, as you can see, is in purple, and that's the assessment centre. So that would be the last stage. And what I mean by calibration meeting is when all of us basically come together and discuss how you performed, um, et cetera, like your, what, what you have said about uh, where you'd like to be placed in the team, et cetera. And then finally, we'd either provide you an offer for the role or decline. But I should say that with any declines that we do give, we make sure that we give a very thorough and in-depth feedback so that this can also um, help you in future applications and future jobs that you apply to. So I'm just going to break it down a little bit further into the process and also give you some tips. So the first step of the application process is to submit your online application, uh, which is through a CV. So I will share the website um, a little bit later uh, where all of our roles are currently on and they are live. And just to also mention that we do hire on a rolling basis. So it's as and when people apply, we fill those roles. Uh, so the application is very fairly straightforward. It'll ask for your personal details um, as well as submitting your CV and just some eligibility questions. So for example, if you are applying for an internship, you would be, um, you'd have to be in your penultimate year. If you're applying for a placement, you'd have to be studying for a placement degree. Um, for our company in particular, we don't actually pay a lot of attention to cover letters. So if, for example, um, there was a choice between someone doing a cover letter or submitting their CV on time, um, I would always go for the CV just because we are so competitive that we do get a lot of applications um, through. So to go through every cover letter just wouldn't be feasible and we wouldn't be able to get through all of the candidates. Now, I've got some CV tips here, and um, you probably might think that these are very straightforward and very simple, but I have gone through a lot of CVs in my time, and, um, you know, it's still quite prevalent that everyone has different styles of writing their CVs. So this is personally what I have um, seen, what our team prefers, um, and it might just be useful for you guys to um, look at as well. So firstly, obviously, keep your CV to no longer than one or two pages. That seems very obvious, but I've had some CVs that have been four or five pages long and um, some of the information hasn't necessarily been entirely relevant. So what I would say is when you apply for a role, definitely look at the job role on hand and the skills that it's asking for and really highlight that in your CV. So, for example, if it's talking a lot about collaborative skills, make sure that those skills are highlighted in your CV. Obviously, include the main sections for education, work experience, interests and achievements, etc. And I think it might be really useful to have um, a peer or um, someone, you know, in your family check through your CV because it's always um, useful to have a second, um, a second eye look at it. And uh, lastly, I'd also say keep the font very simple and the layout easy to read. Um, sometimes I've seen a range of colours like many pictures in in corners etc and if you just just think about how many cvs we go through a day we want the information really um to stand out be easy to read so we can see exactly what qualifications you have what experience what extracurricular activities etc um so i'd say keep it as simple as you can the next stage of the application process is the video interview and we've always had this video interview um, process, so it actually helps in this current climate um, that we are um, a bit more virtual. And the interview is made up of five or six uh, competency based questions. And these competency based questions, you know, there's a, a big amount of them on the Internet. So if you just type them in on Google, you'll get to see a range of examples and sort of familiarize yourself with the style of questioning. And you will have three minutes to answer each question and also the opportunity to complete a practice question before you begin. And you'll only be able to uh, complete the practice question once throughout the whole duration of the interview. So I definitely say make use of that and, um, you know, make sure your lighting is correct. The sound is working. Um, you know, you've told your family that you are about to do a video interview, so you're not disturbed. And that follows on from the tips that we have here. So um, it's really, really important, I think, just to 
familiarize yourself with talking to a camera, talking to yourself, um, whether that's practicing by recording yourself on your phone, doing it in front of friends, just really um, getting comfortable in front of the camera, I think is really um, helpful, especially given the current situation, the climate now, it's very likely that a lot of events, a lot of interviews, um, assessments, etc., will be um, a lot more virtual than previously thought. And so the more familiar we get with that, I think um, the better it will, it will be for you. I'd also say uh, when you have your video interview to only bullet point uh, any prompts to your responses. So either have them on a sticky note uh, on the table next to you or on the chair or on the screen behind you. I wouldn't say to write lengths your whole answer because firstly you're not going to be reading it off um word for word and if you are then it becomes very obvious to the person assessing you that all you're doing is just reading the answer behind and um sometimes that actually proves to be a hindrance more than a help as uh you know it might not be answering the question directly etc so if you know your basic examples and basic experiences then you can really build on that and it will come across a lot more natural So following on from the video interview straight after is two online games. And um, yes, they are literally games um, which take no more than 15 minutes. And the reason that we've had these games, uh, previously we used to have some psychometric testing. However, we have introduced this gamification um, as it's a really, really good way to test, again, a range of competencies which are shown in the screen. So cognitive ability, mental agility, um, reasoning, et cetera but in a way that um, is less complicated than the psychometric testing. So again, we get to see the best of your ability. Um, however, unfortunately, you can't prepare ahead of these, uh, for, these, for these games. So there's not many tips I can give you for this, apart from the fact that um, you only do get one go, so make sure that you read the instructions um, very carefully. Um, you know, previously I found some candidates email me and say, oh gosh, uh, sorry, I didn't read this properly. Can I do another go? And I'm afraid the answer is no, you wouldn't be able to. So if you just take your time, don't overthink. It's literally a game. You know, we're not trying to, to, to catch you out or anything. We want to see how you perform um, and just play as you would um, any other game. The final stage of the application process, as mentioned, is the assessment centre. And again, as you can see on the screen, we have a range of tasks that we do. And usually I should probably mention that they have always been in person. However, um, this year we're looking again for it to be a lot more virtual. So that's gonna be something that's really interesting as well. And um, the task would stay fairly similar, only it would be a virtual setting. So as you can see, we've got a group discussion, client meeting, interview, a pre-prepared presentation and basically what it, what it means by that is that we would send you um, a presentation a week or two before you actually attend the assessment centre and then you present it on the day. Also a written task and I know it says lunch we might not you know be able to give you a virtual lunch however um, usually that is the case that happens in person. So more focusing on the tips and really how you can prepare um, in any sort of job that you apply to. And, you know, you could even apply it to different aspects of your life. Um, so firstly, do your homework. Now, I'm not going to read um, the bullet point bit by bit. So you, you guys can um, have a read of that. However, what I would say is, for example, if you are applying to our company, not just to read, you're not just, you know, type the company on Google and read the first the first page that pops up. So don't just read the history page, but really try to show that you've gone above and beyond and made a real effort to understand the company. So. Again, if you think about how many video interviews we see on a daily basis, you know, it comes in the hundreds. Um, so if everyone starts with the same sentence that Marsha McLennan was founded this many years ago um, by this person, you know, it becomes very repetitive. It shows that they haven't um, really thought about um, what other students are doing and how they can really stand out and be unique. So I definitely say see if you can go in above and beyond, um, you know, start in your interview with a question, et cetera, et cetera. That those kind of things, I think, is really, um, really highlights to us. The second uh, point that I can give you is to read the news. Um, keep up to date with the current events that are happening, especially um, 
in the current climate, uh, keep up to date with the insurance market, the constant changes that are happening uh, with us. It's really, really um, great to see when students mention things that have happened very current to our company. So, for example, um, last year we acquired JLT and that was a massive acquisition for us, which some students mentioned when they applied. And it really highlights to us that they've been keeping up to date with the news and um, they understand the massive implications that it has for us as a company. And knowing these things even before you have the role, just when you're applying, just shows that, uh, you know, when you're on the job, you will be uh, multitasking, you'll be adaptable, you'll be able to understand what is going on around you, which is a really great skill to have. And the last point is to develop your story. So what I mean by this is really be as personable as possible. So, you know, if if assessment centres and interviews are virtual, it's going to be that much harder to build a rapport with the person interviewing you. So I'd say if you come across as natural, just be yourself. Um, and, you know, the, ma the main point is that we want to see how you would fit in with our company, not how every, every person fits in with our company. We want someone unique and we want to see what uniqueness and what attributes you can bring to us um, that no one else has. So at the end of the day, it's how memorable you'll be. And, and the, the way that you can do that is to be as personable as possible and try and create that rapport. So some generic interview tips, um, practice and prepare. I know that sounds very, very simple, but um, it's, it's a common tip that I would give and something that, you know, some students I don't, I don't really see doing. So prepare some questions, have a look on the internet. If you've had interviews before, um, think about the kind of questions that they ask you, ask your friends, ask uh, family to uh, do a mock interview with you. And that way, I think you can become really familiar with the kind of style of questioning, how long your answers are. And um, I think that is very, very useful. Um, again, obviously, researching the company and the role um, so that you know exactly what you're talking about and uh, preparing questions for the interview, I think, is something that's really important and not so much random questions. Like usually when you're talking to the interviewer, the conversation will fl flow naturally and questions will arise out of that. Um, but if that doesn't seem to be the case, then definitely have a couple of questions that you have at hand um, that you could ask the interviewer. Um, the next point that I'm going to say is um, something that I think has really, really helped even when I've been applying, um, when I was applying for jobs. And um, I think generally in what, whichever kind of similar scenario that you're in, and that's pause and think before answering a question. So, you know, it's a lot better to just take a moment and say, oh, that's a great question. Can I have a think about that for a second? Uh, rather than just blurting out the first thing that comes to your mind and you regretting that choice instantly. So what I would say is even if you didn't know the answer to the question, that's completely OK. We don't expect you to, the, to know the answer to everything, but to show that you're still inquisitive or that you still want to learn. So, for example, if you didn't know the answer, you could just simply say, oh, that's a great question. I don't know the answer to that, actually. Could you tell me a bit more about that? Or, yeah, that was a great question. Um, I'm actually going to research that a bit more when I go home because I didn't know much about that. So just to show that, you know, you don't just give up and say, oh, I don't know. And that's it. Move on. Like, you know, um, you've really shown that you've been inquisitive and and you're you're thinking in a in a broader aspect. I've also got some um, sample interview questions um, just below. Um, they're very, very basic, yet um, these are the kind of questions that can actually be quite challenging at the same time as it's um, not a straightforward answer. And there can be two you know, various ways of answering this question. Now, obviously, there is no right answer. So what I could give you is just some generic tips and what to think about when you're answering such kind of questions. So what really motivates you to work hard? Now, um, this is your chance to show the person interviewing you what really drives you. And that's going to be very unique to you. It's not going to be the same as everyone else. And it's your chance to really expand um, on your answer and give them the depth that they require. So what makes you perform at your best and what really motivates you? So it's a chance not only for us to see where 
wh whether you're the right fit for the company. But at the same time, it's also a chance for you to see if we're the right fit. So as much as you know, you you will want a job, you will want a role. At the same time, we want you as well. So it's a it's a two way relationship. So you know, you have to see do our values and do our morals match with yours, and could you see yourself working in a climate like this, in a culture like this? Um, so just think about that. It's a two way relationship. So um, by you showing us what motivates you, we can also highlight to you what drives us, and you can see that through our morals, our values our uh, policies etc then another question actually um is a it is a tough one that sometimes people get tell me about a time <clears throat> you made a mistake and managed to overcome it now everyone makes mistakes we all do and sometimes we make it more often sometimes we don't we make it rarely and that's completely okay the main point of this question is not to emphasize the fact that you've made a mistake, but more so on how you learn from it and how you progress from it. So sometimes I've found students just to talk about the mistake at hand, describe it in a lot of detail, and just say, then this went wrong, and then this went wrong, and then finally this went wrong, and then this happened, and then this happened. However, where you should place your focus is on you know, did you self-reflect? Did I look back and think, oh, OK, so at what point did this mistake occur? Or what could I have done to prevent that mistake from occurring? What can I do in the future to prevent that mistake from happening again? Was there anyone else who noticed the issue before me? And did I, um, you know, get my peers advice on it? And should I be doing that to, you know, for them to point out any potential issues or problems? So that is another uh, another tip that I'd say. And, you know, again, you can find so many um, sample answers and then you can mold them to yours as well and really um, make them your own. So I'd say any experience that you've had, whether it's um, a previous job that you've had, whether it's you've gone volunteering, it's a sport, a instrument that you've learned, a um, holiday that you went on, a family activity etc there's so many variety there's such a variety of um, examples that you could use and that's what we really want um to see from you guys so it's not just you know I went to this university or I went to this school and I did this kind of experience I really want to see or we want to see a broad um aspect of you and see how well-rounded you are as a person um so yeah I think that was just a, a very brief overview of who we are as a company, uh, Marsha McLennan, the fact that we're an insurance and consulting company with um, roles available, um, which are on a rolling basis. And also just some tips on how to um, excel in applications, especially during a difficult time. Um, so I hope that you all enjoyed that and got some useful tips. Um, if you do have any questions, our email is uh, in the green box, as you can see, early careers at mmc.com. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Um, our vacancies did open in September, as, as mentioned, and um, you can also apply on the website shown. But I'm happy to um, join the start the Q&A now. So I'll just stop sharing my screen. Excellent. And I'm then we could get going. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I think I, I'm not sure if you can see me, but I popped up and I just I smiled and I think you were. Oh, no, I didn't see you. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much. And for everyone else who's listening, I'm Lizzie from Rate to My Placement. So I have the pleasure of having a QA. and a um, So, yeah, we've got lots of I've got lots of great questions. And just a, a, a nod to anyone in the audience, please pop them in the chat as well if you've got any more. And what we tend to see is when we start chatting, that's when more questions come yeah. in. So um, I'll keep an eye on, on the chat. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for that. Really, really interesting. And um, loads of great tips as well. Um, so, yeah, hopefully everyone's swatting up now. Yeah. <laughs> so um, if I just run through some of the questions then. So, first one that I'd love to know. So you've talked a lot about what students can do in sort of the interview process, the application process. So um, I just wanted to ask you, what, what qualities are you really looking for in students um, who you're looking to, to get to apply to you? 
Yeah, that's a really good question. And I think especially now when things are getting so competitive, it's so hard to say, you know, you have to be unique because what is unique when everyone's just trying to achieve the same goal? Um, But I would say, especially now, given the current climate and how fast things are changing, we love to see someone who's adaptable and really flexible. So whether that's, um, you know, adapting yourself to different situations, for example, you know, there was one week in March, we were all in the office, you know, working all together in a team. you know, not having Zoom meetings, we were going to careers fairs in person, we were talking to students in person, and then literally in a week, everything changes, and suddenly you're working from home, you have about 20 Zoom meetings a day or so, or something, and, you know, it requires you to be really adaptable, but still continue with your job, so I think something that I'd say to students is, you know, I'm, I'm sure they do that on a regular basis anyway, if they're at university, school, etc., or even in their, in their job, um, to really adapt yourself to different situations and think ahead, um, prepare and try and forecast any issues that you could see or just just be organised. And I think that is something that um, I think this year a lot of people will be looking out for, um, how flexible and how adaptable you are. Mm, Yeah, you make a very good point. It's crazy how things just changed overnight. Yeah, so (laughs) crazy, so crazy. Yeah, and uh, I think definitely the... um, just just even students but the whole world had to adapt in like, literally <laughs> sometimes I do feel like we're in a bit of a movie like are we just all going to wake up and it's like oh um it's strange, isn't it? no that's really really good advice because I think in this in this day and age as you said um bringing people into businesses it's about how you can show that you're adaptable so I think everything you said about the interview process as well and how you can answer those questions if you've always got that in the back of your head that that's what employees are looking for how exactly yeah yeah brilliant advice um awesome so the next one that I have um so you mentioned about core values and morals and I think they're so important obviously to businesses but to to students who are looking to apply so um gonna test you a little bit here (laughs) it's all right if you don't know them all my connection (laughs) (laughs) um it would be great just to hear about um, your core values, so at Marshall McLennan, and then what what you, what do you think sets you apart from other firms? Yeah. Um, so, uh, from what I can remember, <laughs> our core values we really um, pride ourselves in being integral. So, I think um, I mean I work in the early careers team, so I can't specifically talk about Marsh in itself or or Mercer in itself. But when we are recruiting students or when we go to events, etc., it's not really about how many students we can try and get to apply. It's really trying to match our match their their needs to to what they want, if that makes sense. So and that's what I mean by being integral and also honesty. So, you know, if someone comes up and says, um, I'm doing this, this and this and I don't see them as a fit for the company or I don't think they they will be interested. It's so much better to be honest. Um, and I think. That is something that if if someone is looking in from the outside, if if they see that we're honest from the get go, they'll understand that if they join the company, that that is the sort of um, values that we have going forward. We're, We're a very open company. So, you know, if there are any problems going on, if there's any issues, we all treat each other with a lot of respect. And, you know, we don't have this thing called hierarchy. Everyone is is on the same same level and. There's a lot of open discussion and the fact that we can all be honest um, with each other, I think, is one of um, the main values that we have. And just to have everyone's voice heard, I think, is really important as well. I think especially when you are starting out in your career, you feel a bit, you know, a bit nervous, a bit scared. Like, you know, can I say this or, you know, I have such a great idea, but should I really be saying it? Um, We embrace that and we really celebrate that. So I think that's something um, that's one of our values that I can remember. (laughs) <laughs> no that's great and I think it's really nice to hear it because you, you work in the business so yeah you know it's coming from from your own experience which is yeah and um, and I guess in terms of culture so you, you kind of touched on it a little bit already but I think that's such a huge thing for students joining businesses so it'd be great just to hear about what the culture's like from yeah. your experience as well yeah, yeah definitely I think one thing that we we stand out with is the fact that we are four companies so it's a huge huge um firstly it's a huge company and there's so much networking um and intersectional networking between the operating companies as well so for example um when graduates join when interns join when students join generally um they're not just stuck in that little cohort of theirs. There's so much interaction between them, whether that's um, social events, whether that's uh, webinars, whether that's 
uh, insight sessions, etc. There's so much interaction that it's so hard for you not to. I mean, what I do say to students is if you don't want to work in a team or if you're not kind of a team player, then this probably isn't the role for you because you're sort of forced into it um, and you're forced into talking to people um, from the get go. So I would say that we really um, celebrate networking and collaboration and where we can, we try and get people um, together. Um, so that, that's one aspect of the culture. And just generally, I think um, we're very positive. So, you know, being in insurance, et cetera, sometimes we don't always hear the good news. Um, and But just trying to see how we can better ourselves from that. And, and I think that is something that's really important as well, just to keep um, the culture up, keep the, keep the positivity up as well. Mm, definitely I love a positive attitude yes got it got to be <laughs> it gets you through everything it does um brilliant so the next one so you've mentioned a lot about really really good tips so the application process lots of things there so the the one question I always love to ask is what mistakes have you seen um, oh gosh yeah <laughs> a lot um so I, I I I'm not sure what other companies do but in our company we actually watch every single video interview so I know some some places they have a computer that sort of goes through the video interviews um but my manager really loves the personal touch so we do go through every single video interview and I think last year from what uh my my data showed me I think I I probably watched about a thousand video interviews which I can't imagine when I did that um but that is what I did and there were some that were extremely strong and some that I could see some improvement so I know this sounds very simple and probably very straightforward, um, but just being aware of your surroundings. So say if you are doing a video interview, you know, can I see your pajamas? You know, something simple as that. Or are you lying down on your bed or do you have your phone up like a selfie? Things like that. Um, and I think you can tell the difference between someone who's prepared and someone who's literally, you know, got a notification saying you've got five hours left to do your interview. Try and do it now kind of thing. Um, so you know, we don't expect everyone to be perfect. And that's completely okay. Like we, we can understand if you say a word wrong, if you stutter, if you pause for a second, we much rather prefer that than you pretending to, pretending to, you know, be perfect and then, then getting it wrong. So I'd say that's one thing, like just try and it, we will be able to see if you've prepared and made an effort. I'd say definitely that. Um, and then another thing, again, it seems quite straightforward, but when you're applying for a role, to really look at what the role entails and the skills that it's asking for and see if it's a right fit for you and see if you actually know what the role is. And if it's not, if you are a bit confused, then email us or email the recruiter, email the team so you can find out a bit more about the role rather than just applying to it. And then when we do ask you about it, be like, oh, I didn't realise it was it was this. So I didn't know this was involved um, because there's another way to phrase that question. You could be like, oh, I, I don't know much about that. Could you elaborate on that? Or what does that um entail exactly and that's also like I guess another tip on how to shape your questions mm. so how to come across as if you know you don't know anything but that's not an issue but it's just the way that you phrase your question like oh can I have some more information mm. um so I think things like that so nothing nothing major that I've seen to be like oh gosh no um <laughs> but, you know when there are like five page long CV sometimes I'm like okay gosh this person has a lot of experience but is it relevant yeah. um so yeah no really interesting I think sometimes it's the basics isn't it it's yeah it really is. I think I and I don't I don't blame anyone because I think I was probably the same when I applied like I just try you know what can you do to impress like I'm going to list everything that I've done but really just try and keep it simple we want to see you as a person what makes you interesting I remember I when I when I had my video interview I was speaking so much about me doing like a bungee jump and things like that and people were more interested in that then you know my actual like degree so I was like great <laughs> was there any point <laughs> um, but you know just to show how you are as a person because you know everyone has degrees nowadays everyone um you know has some sort of experience but it's the type of experience and what you've learned from it which really makes you stand out mm, yeah and bungee jump where, where did you do that <laughs> oh gosh yeah um, well I've only discovered now that apparently it's really dangerous but I got forced into it um but I, I do um I did it in Windsor and it was only 300 feet so it wasn't like the biggest but it was very fun what? I do recommend Oh, I don't know how to do that. No. <laughs> I'm scared. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the most fun. Well, well, well done. I mean, <laughs> thank you. 
Um, cool. Well, that's some really good answers there. I guess the one one thing we've got lots of students who are probably thinking, who do I apply to, and and what's it really gonna what's it gonna be like? So I think uh, you know a big part of when you don't know about what you're gonna do on an internship or a placement scheme, um, it's it's yeah trying to understand that. So I wonder, is there anything that you could provide any? I guess um insight in terms of what kind of activities that students would be getting involved in and do they work yeah. on deals and things like that would be great yeah definitely um so again this varies year on year and sort of what team you end up in so for example one of our one of our companies marsh say if you applied to the uh graduate scheme you would join uh, apply via the application process as per normal and then it's only at the last stage when you come to the assessment center um we might say we might just have a discussion and say and it might come up that you absolutely are obsessed with maths and everything analytical. So by seeing that, we want to really develop on and, and strengthen your skills. So we might try and place you in some sort of analytical role. Mm. And then following on from that, when you actually join join the graduate scheme, everyone studies a qualification. So firstly, you get support via that. So if you're um, doing an insurance placement or graduate scheme, it will be the a ACII. So everyone around you firstly you get 25 percent um, of your working week so one day a week um doing your uh qualification and that's almost like a almost like a degree kind of thing but you you're so you're studying again but whilst learning on the job as well so it's a great way to um kind of practice what you preach kind of thing um so that's one of the things you'll be doing and also you'll be going out fairly early on from the start to meet clients and that's something that I'm really jealous of like I wish I um worked in that kind of um like the actual insurance industry itself you know all I hear is you know people going out to these cricket matches well I mean I don't know what they're doing now um but cricket matches and like dinners and drinks etc so it's really about building a relationship with clients and I think that's something that is really great to do such from such an early on stage because firstly you know you might be um supporting your team and going all together and then suddenly you'll be left on your own to um you know go to meet this client and and secure that deal so i think a lot of independence is uh, and responsibility is given to you early on but there's always support in the background as well so when you join there'll be a buddy assigned to you and that's someone who has been a graduate either the year uh, in either in the previous year or the year before and it's just someone to have so that you're not you're not alone when you're joining um so yeah, you'll be doing projects um working on different deals uh working on renewals etc so there's a wide variety mm, sounds really exciting lots yeah. Of, yeah lots of different things you can get involved in really good um awesome and i just thought as well obviously be being from rate to my placement um I mean, we've got reviews on there. We've got about 65,000 reviews from students yeah. who have placements and internships. So just a tip for anyone in the audience who wants to have a have a read and work out what it's what it's like to do a placement or internship, that's a, a good way of doing it as well. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I think we've, we've covered quite a few. So we've got a few questions as well from the audience. Um, so deadline for graduate roles, and I guess deadline for all, all roles, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we do hire on a rolling basis. So our roles opened... Um, about a month ago so it's as and when roles are filled so for example um the first people that have applied we would be going through their video interviews etc if they're successful we'd then invite them to an assessment center first and it's very rare that we fill all of our roles straight away like on the first assessment center but as the roles are filled then then that's it so there's not a specific deadline however usually we do stop hiring around january time awesome so get in there early <laughs> yeah, yeah advice love it um, and then a specific one here from annabelle would the aca qualification leave the door open to go into insurance okay. yes definitely so i mean when you actually join the um join the the graduate scheme we expect you to stay on that scheme for that the entire duration however once you know you set set foot into the company there's a lot of scope for you to delve into other things so you know acii allows you to be a chartered um, insurance professional and then the ACA if you're doing MRSA and consulting um, allows you to be um, you know an accountant etc so that kind of stuff is really really opens a lot of doors for you mm, brilliant lots of I love that lots of open doorways yes <laughs> <laughs> oh and um, oh the one that I really enjoyed when you said about the games as well so you're using the games as a replacement so yeah much. Well, um, I don't know if you can uh, explore or explain any more because I know sometimes it's it's behind closed doors. Yeah. What kind of things can students expect with those games? Yeah, I mean, it's really hard to explain because 
um, how can I explain it? It's literally, it, it's almost like shapes um, that are coming. So I won't give too much away, but when you do see it on your screen, like for a second, you might be thinking like, oh, I'm just playing a game. And you know, you might get a bit competitive with yourself, which is which is what we want people to do. And um, I don't know how the computer analyzes all of these competencies, so that's completely beyond me, but we do get a score at the end. Um, but that tied in with the with the interview really gives us a really good general overview. But the, the game itself, it's very, it's too, um short i think they're no longer than 15 minutes and mm -hmm. i think the the better you are at the game i think the shorter this session is if i'm correct um and it's almost like shapes and fitting shapes into certain things or like numbers etc um so it's really fun um i won't tell you my score when i did it because um you know it was not very good but <laughs> we can move on from that <laughs> no yeah it's just really interesting because every it's company really interesting. Has yeah, different ways of, of selecting, I guess. So um, it's, yeah, it's quite cool. You've got a game. Yeah. Um, so yeah, really nice. Um, and I guess probably the last the last one, I would love to know what inspired you to work um, where you are now. Yeah, I think that's, um, that's a really good question. So I myself, um, I mean, I don't have any makeup on, so I probably look about 10 years older than I am. But I did a graduate scheme not too long ago. Well, it was quite long ago. I graduated in 2017 and I joined a graduate scheme at another insurance company. And I studied psychology at university and I didn't really know where to go from there. So I kind of fell into this into this graduate scheme. And there were so many things that I had ideas of and thought about, but I didn't feel as if I could really express them. Mm. And it's not necessarily because of the company itself. It's just more so my thoughts and what I assumed a graduate scheme to be. And I think from then I, I sort of had these so many ideas and I thought, well, why can't I try and help the next graduate or the next, you know, my brother who's who's going to go to university and just to have that better understanding and to have a, a process in place that can really help um, someone starting out in their career. Because it's such a big step going from university or going from, you know, home to, to then a full time role that having that information readily available, I think it's and someone there that you can talk to and kind of gets you. I think it's so helpful to have. So that's kind of how I fell into it. And um, hopefully I'm doing okay. <laughs> hopefully I'm doing a good job by helping people. I haven't had any complaints yet. <laughs> no, no, it's really good. I think because you you didn't breathe it, you can really communicate it. Um, exactly. So um, I, I, I think really enjoyed our conversation. So hopefully yeah. <laughs> one of the audience has as well. Um, yeah. So I think that's just about time now. Um, so mm -hmm. what I want to say was thank you so much. Really great insight. Thank you. And um, you've got a booth, haven't you? So if any, yes. Yeah. Yes. If anyone. Yeah. It won't. It won't be myself, but it should be my colleague. Um, he'll be joining. Fabulous. So yeah, what I'll say is, anyone's got any specific questions that hasn't popped them in the chat yet, please head over to the booth and then um, someone will be there to chat. So thanks again. Um, take care and speak to you all soon. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.